<laughs> no, thank you. Hey, everyone. I want to come on here especially to say thank you to everyone. Everyone that's part of this community over here. Um, I think I... Uh, I don't know if I even, if I mentioned this channel. This is kind of the secret channel now. Um, so 500,000, uh, uh, pretty much 501,000, believe it or not, actually right now. Um, you know, I went to bed at about 1:30 last night, and thank you everybody for the uh, for the warm wishes here. Um, I went to bed at 1.30 and I was probably, I don't know, 80 below 500,000, something like that. And I knew it was going to be, it was going to be, um, in the middle of the night it happened. I woke up and it was already, whatever it was, uh, 500,000 with 86 or something like that. Um, what's up, Carol? Thank you, Carol. Um... But man, it's, um, I feel a, um, just wrung out right now. I feel, uh, feel just, um, just worn out. I feel good actually right now though. But earlier today, I just felt really wrung, wrung out is more the word. Um, so, uh, thanks chops. I appreciate it too. Um, it was fun making the video. Um, oh, we're going to get to a million. It's totally accelerating. Yeah, I mean, it's accelerating because it took 13 months to get to 100,000. And then I went, and then it took six months to get to 200,000. And then I went from January till September, so it's nine months, end of January, so it's eight months to get go from 200,000 to 500,000. So, um, so, uh, so there you go. So I did, th I've done 300,000 in uh, about eight, eight months or so, eight and a half, about eight months really, because, um, yeah, eight months, 300,000. So, you know, um, but it's gotten faster too. I mean, if I just do, you know, um, whatever, 1,200 to 1,500 a day now, every, um, um, I think that, um, you know, you know, it's interesting. I was sitting with Aaron here in the, in in uh, January, last January, so when do you think we were talking about when when I'll hit um, when I would hit five hundred thousand? And we figured out if things went like they were, it would be uh, September eighth, and. Um, and it was September 2nd. So, um, so I think uh, by the summer, less a uh, little bit less than the summer next year, um, I would think by May it'll hit a million. So, if I had to guess. Just got to keep doing, doing what I'm doing. But there's a lot of things that are gonna will bring in, you know. I, th I, th I have a lot of exciting things happening coming up. Um, you know, it's interesting. Somebody said one, there's one comment. I, I couldn't go through all the comments. I tried to. There was over 600 comments in the video today. Um, but I see the ZZ Top comments. I have some ZZ Top tracks. I'm not sure what though. I definitely have some. So, um, um, 
somebody mentioned in one of the comments that I am the right age to be doing this. And I thought about that. I thought that was a really interesting point. I'm old enough to... Um, I was born in 62, so, you know, essentially the middle part of the last century. And now we're... We're not really in the middle, but we're in the first quarter of this this century. So I was alive. You figure I was born the Be when the Beatles' first record came out. So I, I basically saw most of rock and roll created. Um, and I was alive when, you know, when I was born, John Coltrane was alive still. Wes was alive. Miles, you know, all these people. Charlie Parker had died, but... Most of the greatest jazz musicians were alive. Andre Segovia was alive, you know, and a lot of the bands that, that uh, you know, when it comes to popular music, bands like Zeppelin were making records and The Who and all those people. Then I lived through the grunge era and I lived through the, you know, new metal era and I lived through, um, uh, and then, you know, I went through probably the best era of jazz. I mean, I was alive in the 70s. When all the best, you know, when Weather Report, I saw Weather Report, I saw Matheny in the 70s, you know. I got to meet people like Michael Brecker. Miles Davis was at our graduation. He was, uh, he was, uh, got an honorary doctorate when I graduated at NEC in 1986. Um, you know, so that's, um, it's, uh, I think it's really interesting. And then, um, not only you lived through it, you paid attention to it. That's right, Mark. That's right. I paid attention to it. And um, I was over at my brother-in-law's today. Uh, seeing his new house and, and uh, my brother and sister-in-law. And I was sitting there, we were sitting outside listening to Spotify, and I had a new Spotify playlist that I put up. It's just called Songs 1. I'm not sure that it's available. I'm not sure if people can see it. I wonder if I have to post it or something. But I have a new Spotify playlist of songs, and he's like, he says, what are these things? And it's... And it's um, there's a lot of new music on it. It's kind of a, it's kind of a chill. Um, it's kind of a, it's it's an interesting playlist. It's got um, it's got some new bands. Um, uh, let's see what's on it here. I mean, I've got Sigur Rós on it, which is not a new band, but. Um, I have Tame Impala on it, which is not really a new band, but there's a band Loma, Local Natives. I've got Counting Crows. I got My Bloody Valentine. I have some Sonic Youth. I've got um, I have some Cure. I've got this band Ivy that I like. I have My Bloody Valentine, Swerve Driver. I've got some Zeppelin. Uh, I'm, I'm just putting it together, and and uh, he says, "Where do you know?" Um, where do you find this music, some of these new things? And I said, you know, from Spotify. Um, that I, from the, all the different stuff I listen to, they recommend playlists. So I hear stuff, and um, and I save all the songs that I like. And and, uh, and then it starts to learn. The algorithm learns. It, tell, it can tell, I'm sure. I mean, I'm just guessing, but... Um, I th uh, it will see if, if you click on something and click off it really quickly, it must that must go into the algorithm too. Oh, he doesn't like this. We don't. We're not going to serve up things like this. But the algorithm can can really put together some great things, um, and the fact that I'm always listening and studying new music, and I want to know what you know what kids that are in their twenties are listening to, and and uh, people in their 30s, um, it's, you know, you just keep learning. You just keep learning. So, um, 
let's see. Learns and it passes the info to YouTube to block you from playing it. <laughs> Double K, right? Exactly. That's pretty funny, right? Mm. Do I ever listen to Bandcamp? I had a lot of bands that I worked with that used Bandcamp, so I would listen to Bandcamp a lot. Um, but the YouTube suggestions are the same thing. It's the same kind of algorithm that goes into you guys finding my channel initially. Um, what makes the sun great, John Mayer? Definitely going to do that. You remember when MySpace was big, 2005. What's up, Brett? Good to see you. Um, the question is, I'll ask you guys this. I don't know if I've asked you. What made you uh, sign up for this channel? And how did you find it since I never talk about it? You guys get that I don't talk about this because um, I can't follow the comments on the other channel. There's so many people. And if I... If I... Um, it pretty much doesn't move, move from 13,000 now. Um, ear training, a Dylan video. Look at that. Um, you know, uh, I had the kids do a skit that was going to be in the video. And Dylan said, Hey, how come you didn't use me in the video? I said, What are you talking about, Dylan? You're in the video. I put you in a couple times. Alice and Chain subreddit I was in. That's is that true actually? Kelzone man, Soundgarden video. Joe, you you subscribed? Yeah, you were early on it. Fifty thousand. There you go. Modal videos. Um. You heard me mention this channel. Okay. What makes this song great, Regina Spector? That can totally happen. Um, Vince Neil Desmond Child session was the first time, J Bone. That's hilarious. Yeah, I started this one and I told people. Um, I told people about it only for the first little bit, and then I thought, I thought, well. I don't want to tell anybody else because the comments you can't read, and uh, this is this is way better, way more intimate here, and I can test out, I can test out stuff here that I can't do over there, um, and you know I've played some stuff that I don't want to give away over there. I've tested songs to see if I if they're playable, but as you know, what's up, Joe? As you know, it doesn't matter. Look at the Yes video, right? Got taken down after, I don't know, six weeks or something. Um, so I don't know if I left this in the video or not. I can't, I can't remember. But my, my whole thing was that there are no secrets, you know? That's, um, that, that's kind of always been my motto. Uh, you know, when I was first... I wouldn't say that I encountered this in, um, I wouldn't say that I encountered it until I started producing. And, um, and there were people that would, that were really stingy with their knowledge. Um, Jerry, is that right? The channel had three or four videos when you subscribed. That is awesome. Um, David, that's right. I, I, my few Skype sessions. Um, but uh, p there are people. Uh, there was a guy that that uh, I, I'm trying to remember his name now. He's a producer. Well, I wouldn't even say his name. But he wouldn't label the console. He was a mixer, and he wouldn't label the console because he didn't want any of the assistants. Um, 
to know what he was doing, how he's EQing thing, any, anything. I mean, it's just like absurd stuff, right? And a lot of guys in engineering are unbelievably secretive. Um, they just are. And, you know, just because you tell somebody something doesn't mean that you lose it, right? I mean, it's like... Just because someone learns something, there's always new stuff to learn. And, and, uh, and you don't lose it yourself. Just like you can tell someone exactly how to mix a song, all these mixers that are secretive. You can do ex exactly the same thing, but you're not going to put... You're not going to put things in exactly the same place. You're just not... Um, you're not. You just don't have the same taste. You can't steal someone's taste. Um, when I see people that, that shred, I, it's uh, fun. I love shredding. I love people that, that have chops and everything. I really love it. But you can't teach taste. You can't steal someone's taste. No one can play. I always bring up Matheny because he is just so, um, he's just so melodic. And nobody could ever duplicate his melodic sense. Just like the, you know, it's it was pretty much impossible to duplicate um, Lennon and McCartney's melodic sense. It really was, and I don't think anyone's duplicated Kurt Cobain's melodic sense. I think he's got an incredibly unique melodic sense that that is is so sophisticated, and I haven't really talked about it that much. Um, it's um. Uh, you know, those are things you just can't steal because it's taste. It is taste. You can't steal taste. Um, I told 500,000 Matheny time, Brett, I, I wrote to his manager again. And I said, I said everything I had to say, but uh, nothing. Didn't hear back from him. Nothing. Not even a, not even a response saying, no, Pat's not interested or... We don't think it's a good fit. Clayton, can you teach taste? You can improve your taste. You can, absolutely. You can learn taste. Some people, though, that's the aesthetic aptitude. Some people just have good taste. And, and knowing what a good melody is, is about understanding balance. You know, they say that when you look at someone that's a, a good-looking human being, the reason that people think that they're good looking is because they have very, um, very even, uh, their features are located, you know, in very, uh, you know, even places, things like that. Um, that, that there's, you know, beautiful melodies. I mean, you can follow, you can have all these rules, but, but, um, but, and you can improve your taste. You really can. Um, you really can. Symmetry, thank you. Symmetrical features, thank you guys. Thank you, Randall, GDK. Um, that's exactly what the word I was looking from. Um, Matheny's manager, why is Matheny being a snob? Arthur, I don't know. I don't know. Um... Secrets limit evolution. Knowledge should be for the masses. That's what I think. I I I really um, I really believe that. So um, there's the, the a band I work with. Need to breathe. Hey Subi, what's up? Thank you. Um, and their bass player Seth is a super talented guy. And um, when I started working with him, he and he and I really hit it off because he was kind of the engineer of the band. He he always would. He owned he put his own studio together. He and I would talk all the time. He called me up and asked me questions on on recording and on instruments. And I helped him with you know outfit his studio. You know tell him what what kind of stuff to buy. And I always said to him, "No secrets, Seth." And and we, he loved that. He loved that because. Because I believe that, you know, um, my assistant Ken, who was in the video in front of the tape machine in the new video today, he says, um, uh, he says, um, 
Yes, yeah, Seth Bolt. Correct, Joe. That's right. My assistant said uh, he he videotaped Seven Dust was in recording at um, um, Jerry. You always have the best, Jerry. I want to I want to do a uh, I've got to do a sounding off with you or something. You and Joe. Um, uh, so uh, Ben Gross was was producing Seven Dust at this place, Tree Sound, back when uh, in 2001 they were working on a record called Animosity. And uh, Ben is a you know he's a guy that I told the story about that I met in '95, and he told me what microphones he used on everything, and he did it. He told me that because he thought I was I was. Totally, uh, totally clueless. So he says, um, everybody said, oh, Ben Gross, oh, he's incredibly secretive. So he, he was set up in the A room at Tree, and, and my assistant went in and videotaped the whole setup. And, uh, and then we watched it. And you could have gotten fired for that. You could have gotten fired. But just going through and reinforcing and seeing that that um, that the setup that he had told me that he did, the microphones, was exactly right. That's what he did. But everybody else told me, oh my God, Ben, ben never tells anybody what he does. He's unbelievably secretive. But once again... You're not going um, like, mean, to... He would do things like... Um, and a lot of these guys would... Before they, they had the Stephen Slate trigger for, for samples, all the old school guys would load their sampler their samples into uh, an AMS sampler. And I remember that we were out in L.A. I was working on a session and the power went out, which doesn't happen in L.A. that often, but the power went out in the studio, the Ben studio I was working at. I wasn't working at, I was working in a different room. He was mixing something. And all it dumped all the samples that he was using. And they had to reload them. And they loaded the samples in. Um, be, and they didn't put them in the sessions. And they didn't put them in the sessions because they didn't want any of the bands to have their samples. But when I worked on stuff, I worked with um, with Randy Staub. Um, oh, by the way, what makes us... Carlos, Chris Cornell is coming up. We're making that video on Tuesday. I got a special treat. Chris Cornell, what makes the song great? It's uh, being made on Tuesday. It won't come out on Tuesday. Um, I have a special thing for it that that uh, is actually gonna that we're actually gonna rehearse and record for that one. Um, so, um, so this this thing about being secretive, though, in in production is uh you know this whole loading the samplers and then never letting anyone in there um they wouldn't let the assistants go in and write anything down and people you know i think it's just absurd um i really think that people thought that um i mean look at look at uh, dumble right dumble amplifiers or um, the um, uh, the distressor. On the distressor, they scratch out. They used to, anyways. All the components, all the whatever they are, the ICs in there. They have all the the um, all the uh, all the identifying features of everything in there. Um, is are, are scratched out on a distressor. If anyone's ever opened up, all the values, everything are scratched off. I think that they they go in there and they um, they used to. I guess they would must use some type of etching tool to take the stuff off that. Um, this makes you want to figure it out, anyways. And and um, um, I guess a dumble used to dump some type of uh, epoxy or something on the circuit board. So people couldn't figure out what he was doing. Secret of how you get multi-tracks. It's no secrets. I tell people how I get them. 
Um, what's up, Mark? Daniel, I did hear that Bono lost his voice. Um, um, you know, it's it's amazing that I haven't done a YouTube video, and I am such a massively big YouTube fan. What's up, SB? Days of the New. Interesting. Okay. I'm drinking this weird stuff. It's called Comfort. It's from Costco. Watermelon peach. Al um, aloe vera juice drink. And it's got, um, it's got stuff in it. It's crunchy. I mean, it's got peach and whatever in it. Um... My hair looks good tonight. That's funny. Um, Dumble's design secret is the epoxy. That's what makes it sound good. <laughs> That's probably true. Um, floating jelly in it. Yes. Exactly. Wondering, wonder if YouTubing has changed me. I don't know. Has Have I changed... Um, have I changed on here at all? I don't think so. <laughs> um, I've not changed. Good, Joe. Um, Thanks, Kinch. Streetwise Guitars. That's my boy, Kinch. You guys should all subscribe to his channel. He's got a, uh, a video he's been working on for, for days and days coming out on his channel. He's got a very new channel. Like we all had. You know, um, I, was, uh, I was reminiscing about how... Uh, how when I first started my channel, I'd get these comments. Wow, I love your video. I can't believe how few views it has. You know, man, it's unbelievable. It's, you know, I can't believe you have no subscribers. People were embarrassed to leave comments. And uh, it took me forever to get a video that had over a thousand views. I'm, oh man, I probably had... I probably had done maybe 30 videos or something that uh, that before I had um, before I had any video with a thousand views. Um, it was it was yeah it was it was it was weird. Um, is fighting for everything, you know. You're just fighting for for people's attention. Um, any thoughts on the next? What makes this song great? Um, no opinion about switching to Apple. Um, Apple's fine, you know. What, whatever. You know, whatever works. I'm using the Hackintosh, but I have the Apple. Obviously, I have the Mac OS on it, and I like it. Um, did I think I'd make it when I started the channel? No, of course not. No, I got really bummed out. I almost stopped when, when, um, my friend Dotan from Piano Around the World, you guys know that YouTube channel? He, uh, he, he contacted me when I had about 4,000 subscribers very early on. He says, man, I think your channel is going to be big. I've told this story before, but. Um, and he had, he had videos with millions of views and, uh, and, and he said, I said, so do you make money from this? He goes, oh no, you don't make any money from YouTube. And I said, what do you mean? I said, I said, you have millions of views. He goes, yeah, they don't, those doesn't really pay anything. I said, what do you mean? Like how much? He said, oh, you know, you get, 
like 1200 bucks for a million views. I said, a million views, you only get 1200 bucks? What? <laughs> and, uh, and he has, he has got some videos with 4 million views, stuff like that. Um, you're the 50th. Look at that, Jay Bone. Kinch is going to be great at this. He's just getting his, uh, you know, he's got that new, new, new channel kind of thing going, trying to find his, find his legs, but he's, uh, he's, he's awesome. Um, I passed him, <laughs> Joe. He's, he's, uh, he's got videos with 4 million views. He's got a bunch of videos, um, He's got a few videos with a million. I mean, I've got two videos that have a million views. That's it. And one of them's Dylan, so it doesn't count. And one of them's like I don't have one. You know, I look at all these other channels that have, um, you know, that will have these viral videos and everything, and and uh, I I don't have viral videos other than Apple. I I'm uh, you know slogging it out every time. Um. Um, Days of the Alice and Chains. What's your favorite cricketer? Mitch Michael Easter. Best. Uh, what's okay? Quality, not quality. Quantity. That's it, Gal. Exactly. That's it. And I never. Um, I I went back in when I was putting together stuff. Um. And and I was looking at some of the bad editing and some of the, my my videos because I was so tired at night when I was uh, when I was making them. A lot of the film scoring things that I did when I was in the control room and doing them playing the keyboard, I was doing that because I had all the gear set up for sessions here and I couldn't touch anything. You know, you had everything mic'd up. The whiteboard stuff, Joe. Inter interestingly enough, was uh, uh, you know that was. That was a thing where I got the whiteboard for Dylan, um, and uh, and then I thought, oh, this will make it, this will be great for um, this will be great for for doing uh, doing lectures. So um, come on, Rick Beato, Apple or not. And Andrew P. Um, look, I like the Apple operating system, okay? But the Apple computers um, are way overpriced compared to PCs. So the, to me, the only solution was the Hackintosh. You get five times a computer for for the you know. You get an Apple that's way more powerful for um, for you know. I think I, my my computer costs twelve hundred bucks with all the parts, something like that. Sixty four gigs of RAM, four point seven gigahertz processor. You know, you couldn't get it. You couldn't get this stuff. I've got thirteen USB three slots on the thing. I've got. I mean, no way, no way could you ever put put a computer like this together with sixty four gigs of RAM. Forget it. For twelve hundred bucks, no way. An Apple computer like that is—is uh, uh, is it stable, Martin? It's so stable. I've had no problems with it. Aaron built it for me. I've had no problem. What's the Hackintosh? The Hackintosh is a PC that runs the Apple operating system. So. PC with a Mac OS on it, right? It's great. I mean, thousands, Subi, it would cost. How, how much would that computer cost? I mean, I built it a year ago, but you got to figure, I have a one terabyte or two terabyte. Um, how do you get the Mac OS on it? Aaron did that. Maybe I'm not supposed to say that. Um... But uh, 
I forget what uh, what size. Um, over five thousand dollars GDK for sure. Um, yeah, Aaron's been amazing, Julio. Just incredible. A uh, parts list where you can build one, Eric. Um, you can go. Uh, he just followed it online. There's 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 sites with it on it. The Apple doesn't care. Apple doesn't take them down. They learn a lot from the Hackintosh people because most Hackintosh people are um, are heavy heavy uh, Apple users, and they're really they they've supported the company for years. So. Uh, do you get a silver and gold YouTube play button? No, a million is the next level. So I'm, I have to double what I have now. <clears throat> so, um, um, Tom, in the beginning, you love the whiteboard stuff. You're so lost with what I was teaching. After the time of the Beato book, you finally understanding musical language. There you go. There you go. Uh, should be an option to be at a merch store, <laughs> oh, brother. Um, Tom Quayle did did Kinch. He posted how to build one. Yeah, there's videos on YouTube of how to build one. When when we went into this place, because Aaron built one for Carol too. Um, we went into this place here in town, Micro Tech, Micro Center, Micro Center. And we got a we got a cart, and the, as soon as we got a cart, we started um, um, we started um, walking around, and a guy walks up to us like, "You guys, you guys are building a Hackintosh, right?" So yeah, how do you know? He just said that. Look, um, there is a video of us explaining the Hackintosh. So. Um, we got all the parts there. You know, you buy the outer part, the the the, the case, decide what you want it to look like. You, um, you know, you just buy all the parts, put it together. He put it together in 45 minutes or so. He had Dylan help him. It was great. Really, really great. How about a long sleeve thermal Beato shirt in black? That sounds like a great idea. Um, but he was following a parts list from a, um, well, he knew it already. He knew all the parts we needed. It was, uh, great, great, great. I mean, it had no problems. Knock on wood. Where's my wood here that I can knock on? Oh, here, there. Um, no problem. So stable, fast, everything. I put in my, um, I took my PCIe card from my computer in the other room uh, that does my um, native instrument stuff. I put it in, came right up. Didn't do anything. Didn't need any drivers, nothing. Worked perfectly. Maybe it needed drivers, I can't remember. Um... Apple wouldn't make any money just selling software. That's right, Fernando, because of piracy. That's correct. So really buying a pre-assembled PC, that's the expense. It's not pre-assembled. You have to assemble it, Ronnie, because you can't... There's really specific parts that you can... Um, that you can... That you can do. So, Joe, okay, so in fairness, the 1200 bucks, I bought a lot of the RAM used off eBay, okay, for way less. Because RAM, st the sticks of RAM are so cheap, nothing can happen to them. It's not like they go bad, like, oh, they they got worn out or something, right? Um, so that's a, you know, that's one thing that I would, um, Martin, Martin's right, it's a custom PC, that's what it is. Um, so, I bought that used. That saved a lot of money. The processor was on sale. The 4.7, it's an i7 processor. Um, one of your RAM sticks stopped working. Oh, man. What's up, Alan? Thank you. Appreciate it. Alan, I did that Simon and Garfunkel for you, man. I know how much you like Simon and Garfunkel. I don't know if you saw the video. Um, 
the um, the processor I got on sale for two hundred and seventy nine bucks, and I have an SSD drive, yeah, like a one or two terabytes drive um, in it that I had bought previously that I that I put in there. Um, RAM gets ruined by static. I, I, you know, I mean, they, that's why they come in the static free bags. But the the assembly of it is incredibly simple. It's incredible. It's just plug and play, basically. You know. Um. How about upgrading older Mac? I just upgraded my Mac. Um, my 2011 iMac, which had a fan issue that, that my assistant GL fixed. I cannot believe he fixed it after all these years. I got this cable that made the fan go off and it's, um, and it works incredibly well. So, um, and thank you everyone again for the, uh, for the congratulations on that. It's 501,000 now. Uh, but 499,999 more to go to get my next award here. Uh, somebody asked earlier, I saw the question, do I do it for the, for the subscribers? No. No, of course not. Um, of course not. That's, that's always the... Um, that, that's always... The, oh, thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um... That's that's the uh, you know you can't predict those things and that's why I tell people you know um, I started following Nare's channel when she had 900 subscribers and um, and now she's got 80 some odd thousand you know I knew her channel was going to be big that's why I reached out to her to do a video with me when she had a thousand subscribers. That's not a YouTube thing to do. YouTubers are all about finding somebody that has the same amount of subscribers or more and trying to, you know, but I don't I don't do the YouTube stuff like that. I don't I don't play the YouTube game like that. But I do believe in promoting other YouTubers. I'm very big into that. Um and I have I I have a um um I I um You've had many YouTubers like Adam and Amy Nolte and Nare and Rhett now and and uh, and Rick Graham and Music Is Win Tyler and uh, who else? I've had a lot of YouTubers on my um, on my channel, like Sean Daniel, who I'm going to see in Germany. Um, Nari was on that. That's right, Jack. She was on that creator on the rise. Um, I had Warren on. I'm going to Germany the first week. Um, oh, yeah. Go follow Alan's channel, Alan Mearns who's on here, follow his channel. It's amazing. His, his, Alan's one of the best musicians I've ever worked with. He's incredible. Um, Rat has learned not to go live at the same time as me. I had to tell him a bunch of times. Um, thank you, Daniel. Um, do I travel a lot as a producer? I'm not producing anymore. So I go to Germany the first week in October. I'm looking for a German that knows. Um, I'm looking for a couple people to, to help me out on a video in Leipzig. I'm making a Bach video and I want, I need a couple, I need a couple uh, uh, Bach experts. If anyone knows any to, uh, they can speak English. They can help me out with my Bach video. Um, any chance of video with branching out of your normal drop two harmony? Um, 
You know, I did one video with drop voicings, and they're just so dry to make a video of. Um, that um, it's it's um, yeah, they're just really really dry. I don't know. I have to think about that. Amy's celebrating her two-year YouTube anniversary today. She's 118,000 subs. I remember when Amy joined, because I joined about three months before her. I did not see Scott's Space Lessons tribute to me. I did not. What's that? Oh, yes. You saw the Scott's Space Lessons tribute. I did not. When was that on, J-Bone? That's, that's very nice, um, if that's uh, the case. Um, I don't know Scott at all, really. Um, but he seems like a great guy. Um, everything about doing an ELP video? Of course. D drop 2 is not a boring topic. It's um, <laughs> drop voicings. Uh, uh, bass players from... Okay. <laughs> something like that that's funny um yes harrison if bach were alive he would be a jazz musician um who is that joe i don't know that person on youtube um Okay. Interview with Tim Pierce. So I'm doing a video with um, with um, when I'm in Germany. I'm Adam and I are doing a video together. We're going to do two videos together, and I'm doing a video with um, with Pete Thorne. Uh, we are doing a video together. You guys know Pete Thorne? He's a great guitar player. Uh, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. Um, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with that. So, um, um, yeah. So I've been in touch with Pete. Uh, I, we have an idea, I have an idea of what I want to, um, of what I want to do for the, for the video. Um, he plays the Eddie Van Halen stuff to a T, okay. Um, he's got a great... He's got a YouTube channel. He does some great um, um, He just did a great demo of the UAD plugin that uh, Sir Amp that he did a very good demo on. When will I see Aiden again, Subi? Talked to Aiden a few weeks ago. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. I I'm really at a loss for how to um, s schedule this thing with Iden. It's very difficult. Um, really difficult with him being in Turkey and him. He teaches in in Switzerland and. Um, so it's really hard to, or it's been hard to figure out a, um, it's hard to lock Iden down in anything. That's the problem, honestly, it really is very difficult. Um, to write or mix every day. <laughs> um, There you go, JC. 501. Please get in touch with Jacob Collier. I've written to Jacob Collier a couple times, never heard back from him. Tom Waits.
political climate in Turkey is, is you know, an issue, but Iden's an American citizen, so... Um, he has been for 20-something, 20 25 years, probably. Um, thank you, PJ. Appreciate that. Reach out to Henning. Okay. I've heard of him. Ty Tabor, Tommy Bolin, yeah. Have you got any thought to what I'll do after a millionth subscriber? Two million subscribers. Um, would I ever mix with headphones? Uh, maybe. I have in the past, but... Thank you, Monty. Um, there's a massive tonal difference miking symbols from below. Uh, would it work for rock? Some people do it. Um, like um, Eric Valentine. Uh, he calls them underheads. Um, he'll use things like Cole's 4038s for uh, below the symbols facing upward. Uh, so, you know, that's definitely something. What's up, Thomas? That's definitely something that uh, it would be an interesting video, honestly. That would be a really good video. Okay, I better go here. I was only going to come on and say thank you to everybody. You guys are the best. Do I let drummers bring their own cymbals? Do I have my own? I have my own. I definitely have my own. I just bought a cymbal. Uh, Eric has the unfair, unfair childs, exactly. Um, I uh, I just bought a new pi pasty, pasty cymbal. Uh, 